Here is a mind-blowing statistic. One in every five living organisms on the planet is a beetle. That would mean that those critters alone make up for 20% of life. Evolutionary studies have discovered that very few families of beetles have ever died out in the near 250 million years of their existence, unbroken lines of beetles that exist to this day. A species surviving multiple extinction events with flying colors will surely have an extremely prolific population, which they do, but there's more. Biologists have identified roughly 400,000 different species of beetles, with new species being discovered almost every day. Estimates place the number of beetle species to be in the millions, with the most generous estimation totaling 3 million types of beetles. Beetles can be found in practically every biome on Earth, with varying degrees of diets, breeding, looks, behaviors, sizes, etc., the smallest of which get almost microscopic and the largest reaching the size of your hand. Most beetles are actually beneficial for the environment, though some beetles will ravage an ecosystem. Perhaps the most notable type of beetles are classified as dung beetles. Dung beetles, such as the scarab, will gather waste, form it into a ball, and roll it to a suitable space, effectively spreading manure and enriching the soil. Of course they do it for their own reasons, but it's an added benefit for ecosystems. Dung beetles are essentially the world's foremost garbage disposers, and could very well be the origins of religion. Ancient shamanic belief systems around the world featured beetles such as the scarab as a central figure for worship and an axis for cultural development in general. Ancient Egypt is the most obvious example of beetle worship, with the scarab god Kepri. Beetle symbology can also be found in Mesoamerican cultures, Germanic and Nordic cultures, as well as Buddhist and Taoist beliefs. Certain Christian church doctors have also compared Christ to beetles. Beetles have long-standing roots in human religion and mythology even though they have all but died out in terms of our modern use and belief of them. Why were beetles so important to so many different countries? For starters, they undergo metamorphosis, which can be interpreted as rebirth and change, a popular theme in religion. They can fly, they have hard glossy shells, almost jewel-like in some cases. The Egyptians believed that scarabs did not have to breed, but that they emerged from their dung mounds in a process of self-rebirth. Beetles were used in art and in carvings. Either beetle symbology was worn in ornamentation and charms, and in some places actual beetles were worn as adornments. They are a mysterious and fascinating creature, but it doesn't end there. The scarab navigates its dung balls via the sun, stars, and moon. Researchers have found that dung beetles actually use the galaxy to orient themselves to the best location, the only creature known to be able to do this. There is another theory worth mentioning as to why beetles were the object of such reverence for our ancestors. To understand, we need to take a look into the world of the McKennas, both Terence and Dennis. Botanists and historians, the two of them helped to put psychedelic substances into the limelight, specifically and most notably psilocybin, or magic mushrooms. Extensive research and studying led them to develop an idea called the stoned ape theory. It was their hypothesis that primitive hominids found and ate these mushrooms because it was a heavily available food source that is found all over the world. The theory goes that over many hundreds of thousands of years, these apes feeding off of the psychedelic food eventually evolved to more complex brains that would lead to our current species. Psilocybin is known to be able to create new brain pathways and reduce fear, enhance creativity and thinking, and proliferates feelings of peace and community. These effects have been proven in other animals and not something unique to its interaction with humans. Furthermore, psilocybin can enhance senses and sharpen awareness at certain doses. Heavier doses can cause visual and auditory hallucinations. Mushrooms have been used by shamans going back many thousands of years, and there are heavy mushroom undertones in numerous religions, so at the very least mushrooms have had a huge impact on culture and religion, if not our actual evolution. All interesting stuff, but what do mushrooms and dung beetles have to do with each other? Here's where things get really good. Dung. The mushrooms grow in manure and waste. Waste that is spread and cultivated by the scarabs. Both exist all around the world and play huge roles in the origins of human society and culture. It is possible that humans would find beetles in piles of dung with mushrooms growing around them. A source of food, they eat the mushrooms and begin to have psychedelic trips. The logical explanation of the time would be that the mushrooms were being made by the scarabs. The tiny insects being attributed with one of the most mind-bending experiences a human could have, especially at the time. It's no wonder that mushroom and beetle symbolism can be found in most parts of the world. The next question is, and this is where the conjecture begins in earnest, is it merely coincidence that mushrooms and scarabs practically co-evolved with humans? Okay, so hear me out. Terence McKenna entertained the idea that psilocybin mushrooms could be interdimensional beings, or some sort of evolved entity that places itself in the mushrooms in order to communicate or relay some type of message to any creature that consumes it, except for insects. Scientists have also discovered that psilocybin has adverse effects on insects, most notably reducing their appetites, which means the scarabs that seem to be cultivating these shrooms can't even eat them, so it's not for them. 
The psychoactive substance only affects animals. It is quite odd that there are so many beetles in the world, but in contrast, there is only a handful of mushrooms with the psilocybin chemical. Another odd note about mushroom trips is that they can be universal among the higher doses. Remember, high doses is when entity interaction begins. This means that people around the world taking different mushrooms at different times will report having the same experiences of talking to certain specific and describable beings. The universal trip could potentially explain why so many mythological origin stories bear such striking similarities. If mushrooms really were the origins of a number of religions, then this could further explain why the commonality in religion. Another interesting note is some scholars will draw the connection between Jesus and Egyptian mythology. As stated before, Jesus has been compared to a beetle. But another theory claims that Jesus was a mushroom. Jesus as a person was only used metaphorically and the body of Christ that was eaten in the early stages of Christianity were really magic mushrooms. Sounds like an extremely bold claim. Yet in anecdotal evidence, mushroom users have claimed to see a Jesus-like figure in their trips. Perhaps Jesus wasn't the man, but an entity inside of the psychoactive chemical. The icon of the acorn is also common in early Christian architecture and art. The acorn is a symbol for the pineal gland or third eye, something that is often associated with things such as psychoactive chemicals and trips. It is all very interesting, but so far just theory and conjecture. As bizarre as this all might sound, the reality of the fact is that it is completely within the realm of possibility. Scarabs using the stars to orient themselves and finding the proper location. They could be using it as a reference point, but what if they are practicing astrology? using star charts, the sun and moon, to find the most beneficial place to set up shop and leading to the most ideal spot for the mushrooms to grow. Perhaps beetles and mushrooms work in tangent for some purpose, or perhaps it is just nature's coincidences. It is hard to say for sure, but one thing is certain. It is worth investigating, and we should never claim to completely understand how anything works, because you're always one discovery away from completely turning the world on its head.